Hi guys, welcome to the third video of the Web3.js series. Today, you will learn everything about wallets and accounts, and you will be able to sign and send transactions to the Sepolia and Mumbai testnets. By the end of this video, you will be able to understand the relationship between accounts and wallets objects in Web3.js. You will see two different ways to send transactions to the blockchain and why I recommend using wallets for it. If you want to connect with other developers and get Web3.js support, I will drop the link to the Discord in the description. So let's keep things simple and get started. An account in Web3.js is an object with two properties, which are an address and a private key. If you use the method create, we will generate a random account. So let's see this in the console. And as you can see, it returned an account with an address and private key and three different methods that we will see later. And if we run this again, it will return a completely different account. But what if you don't want to generate a random account, but you want to use your wallet? So in this case, we can use the method private key to account and it will create an account with our private key. So for example, we can go to MetaMask. We can get the account details, show private key, put your password. And then you can copy paste the private key and then you can send it here as a parameter. And something really important, don't forget to put the zero X here. And then it will return an account with our wallet and address. So as you can see, we got this address. And if I go to MetaMask and I copy my address, we'll see that it's the same. We can also use the method private key to address and it will return the address that is paired to that private key. So if we run this, we can see that it returned this address that is the same that we used in the previous method. If we want to hash a message, we can use the method hash message. This will receive a string with the data that we want to hash and the output will be the hash. But this is not only performing a Kishak 256 in the input like we saw in the last video of the Web3 utils. This is actually hashing the message with the Ethereum standards, which is using the prefixing scheme that is here. So if we run this, that's why we will get different results. But if we want to get the same result, then we can add this prefix message, just adding the prefixing scheme, and then we can send this to the web3.utils.sha. Then let's run it again. And then you see that we got the same result. If you want to sign data, you can use the method sign, which will receive as a parameter the message that you want to sign and a private key. And this will return an object. So in this case, let's hash the message hello web3 with this private key. The first way that we can do it is by using the web3.eth.accounts.sign. Then we send the message and the private key. And the second one is by initializing an account with private key to account. Then I send this private key here. And then I can access to that method by using my account.sign and only sending the message. So let's run this. And then as you can see, we got this object with the message, the message hash and the signature. We can use the method recover to recover the signer of a message. This method will receive a signature result as a parameter and it will return the address of the signer. So the first thing that I will do here is to sign a message. This will return the signature result or signature object. I will print it here just for you to see what the signature object is. And then here we are going to use the recover method to see who was the signer of this message. So let's run this in the console. And as you can see, this is the signature object. And then here we have the signer of the message. Now it's time to sign transactions. So the first thing that we have to do is to get our private key. Make sure that you have funds in this wallet so you will be able to sign and send the transaction later. After that, we need to initialize an account. So I use the, the method private key to account. After that, we need to create a transaction object. These are the minimum requirements that the transaction should have. The from must be the account that you previously initialized. Otherwise, you will not be able to send the transaction. The two, I just randomly choose an address. The max priority fee is a tip to incentivize the nodes to process your transaction. You can put also one here if you want, but then your transaction might take a while to be mined. The max fee per gas is the maximum fee that you are willing to pay for gas. This is a tricky value because this can change from time to time, but I will show you what to do to avoid that error. The value in this case, I will just send one way from this account to this account. There are other optional parameters that you can put like the data the nouns, but that's out of the, the scope of the tutorial today. Then we can create an asynchronous function to sign the transaction. So I use the method sign transaction. I send as a parameter the transaction object, which is this one. And then I will print the signature object in the console. 
So let's run this. First, I will change this value for 100,000 just to show you the error in case that you face that error as well. So as you can see, the error here is max fee per gas less than block base fee. This is also showing you what is the base fee value at that time. That is this number here. So if you just want to make this work, what you can do is just to send this number times two and then that will work. So as you can see now it worked. Now let's see how to recover the signer of this transaction and then let's send this transaction to the network. To recover the signer from a transaction, what we need to send is the raw transaction value. This is the most important value of this signature object. So we can just use the method recover transaction and we send the raw transaction as a parameter. And now let's print this in the console. And as you can see, we got the signer here. Now, after doing all these things, you are wondering, how can we send this transaction to the network? So I will reuse the code from the previous section where we just use a private key to initialize a new account. Then we create the transaction object. We sign the transaction. And here is the method send signed transaction, which will receive the raw transaction as a parameter and it will return the transaction receipt. So let's run this. And as you can see, this is the transaction receipt with the block hash, the block number, and all the other different parameters. If we want to see this transaction in iter scan, we can copy paste the transaction hash. We can go to sepolia.iterscan.io. We can put here the transaction hash, and you can see that the transaction is already confirmed 36 seconds ago from this address to this address, and the value was one way. This is, I will say, like a more complex or manual way of sending transactions. But now we will see how to send transactions using the wallet object instead, which will be way easier. A wallet in Web3.js is an object that can hold several accounts and can sign and send transactions under the hood. The create method receives as a parameter the number of accounts that we want to create inside that wallet. So in this case, let's create two accounts inside our wallet. Let's run this in the console. And as you can see, we have a wallet array that is holding two accounts here. This is the first one and this is the second one. The method get will help us to retrieve an account from a specific index inside the wallet. This index is starting from index zero. So here I create a wallet with five accounts inside. And then here I will retrieve the account number three because we have three index, index zero, index one and index two. So let's run this. And then as you can see, we got the account number three. This is the same as using square brackets like this. So feel free to use what is easier for you. The method remove will remove an account from a specific index in the wallet and the method clear will remove all the accounts from the wallet. So let's run this. This is the method clear. So before, before the method clear, we have two accounts in the wallet. And then after clear, we can see that there are no accounts left. Now let's run this with the method remove. We are going to remove the account that is in index number one. So that will be the second account. So as you can see here, we have the wallet with two accounts. And then after, we have the wallet only with one account. If you want to initialize the wallet with your own private key, you can just do it by using the method add, which will receive as a parameters an account object or a private key in a hexadecimal stream format. So here we can directly add the private key to the wallet and it will return a wallet. Or here we can just first create an account and then we can add that account to the wallet. Let's run this in the console. If you try to add an account that is already in the wallet, you will see this here, account this address already exists. So it will not add a duplicated account to the wallet. Sending transactions using a wallet is the best way to go and super simple. The first thing that we need to do is to initialize the wallet. In this case, I added a private key. Then the second thing is just creating a transaction object. The best thing about using this is that we don't really need to specify anything related to gas or fees. We can just put the from field, the to field, and optional can be a value or data. And lastly, we can send directly the transaction to the network by using the web3.eth.send transaction and sending the transaction object as a parameter. And this will return the transaction receipt. So let's run this. And as you can see, we got this transaction receipt here with the block hash, the block number, run field. So we can just get the transaction hash 
and we can go to Mumbai scan. Once we are here in mumbai.polygonscan.com, we can put the transaction hash, and then we can see that this is the from address to address, and we sent one way. If maybe you face any errors here in the console with the gas, that could be a provider error. So in that case, I will advise you to change the provider here or maybe change the network as well. Because I was facing some errors with Sepolia, so I just changed to Mumbai network and it worked well. Don't forget that you must have funds in the network that you are using to perform the transactions. So if you are using the Mumbai, you should have Polygon test tokens. And if you are using Sepolia, you should have Ethereum Sepolia test tokens. I will put the link in the description to chainlist.org where you can get a lot of provider endpoints. Don't forget to check the include testnets and then you can search for different testnets and you can get different RPC providers as well. I will also put the link to the Sepolia and Mumbai faucet so you can get test tokens as well. And that's everything for today. Remember that using the wallet object, you can use the method send transaction by sending a transaction object as a parameter. While for accounts, you need to use send sign transaction and send the raw transaction signature as a parameter. Using wallets, you don't need to deal with gas estimations and signing transactions, since all of this is happening under the hood. In the next video, we will start deploying and interacting with the smart contracts. So don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned. See you soon.